are running the circular economy club in Reading, and as part of you know our ways to really try to amplify uh, local initiatives and people that are doing great things around the circular economy, we decided to launch this online series basically. Um, and this, the concept is very simple: we all grab a cup of coffee and we come and chat to uh, basically. Uh, local entrepreneurs, I was saying, or people doing something around the circular economy. So today we're very lucky to have Danielle and Harriet from uh, Hanjidan 3D Print. Um, and I will leave it to Erica um, to have a conversation with them. Thank you, uh, Sophie, and, and welcome everyone. I hope you've got your cup of tea or coffee um, to hand. Um, yeah, today we, we've got um, Daniel and Harriet from Handed Down 3D Printing. We're going to really jump in and um, get straight to sort of asking some questions for them. And one thing that we do at the start is really to ask them to bring their circular conversation starters. So a 3D, um, not, so I'm giving it away, uh, <laughs> an object, a physical object or, or something like that that really um, connects them with the circular economy and really we'll see whether the conversation um, flows from there. So, um, yeah. Daniel, Harriet, welcome. What what have you brought with you today? Um, we brought quite a few things because we are in the There's workshop. A of granulated plastic as one of our main physical items. Nice, um, what type of plastic is that? It's PLA, so Obviously, Handjadown's 3D Prints is a 3D print was a 3D printing business predominantly, but up until what, what was when did we start? Two years ago? Year Roughly ago? about a year and a half ago. So about a year and a half ago, we started repurposing our waste material, so waste PLA, from things like failed prints, which I can actually grab some as well because we have that here too. <laughs> uh, support structure things that usually you wouldn't be able to do anything with because you can't recycle it in a black box like you would most plastics because it's just, it needs specialist, it needs a specialist catalyst for it to break down. PLA is quite clever in the sense that it is technically biodegradable, but it needs a catalyst for it to actually biodegrade to get the process yeah. starting. So you can't just send it off the usual way. Yeah, and for those not kind of maybe, um... Kind of knowledgeable in the 3D printing area is is PLA this um, the dominant plastic or, or yeah. to use in them? a way it is PLA is sort of like in the nicest way possible the most bog standard sort of material anyone who's let's say you're a beginner or you're a hobbyist it's probably the best thing to start with because you want to test stuff you can get loads of other materials but of course PLA is one of the more cheaper but still durable items to buy sorry materials to buy it's quite popular as well yeah and it's very popular because of it being it's technically a byproduct of uh sugar cane which is why it's biodegradable so it it is environmentally friendly but it also it's still plastic so we yeah. always hold on to our this is an example of a failed print so as you can see i held it up a bit close so during the night it had a knot in a spool so a spool is um sort of a wheel of plastic it's kind of like of spaghetti minutes. Um, and it got a knot, so it meant the print failed because yeah. this is what it should have looked like yeah. lovely skull <laughs> for Halloween, and then unfortunately, that's what happened to it. And um, through all the years of being a small startup company, um, I just got sick and tired of having all these waste, all this plastic that I knew would just go into the landfill, or unfortunately, might land it find its way in the oceans. So I was like, Well, what do I do? So I've just kept boxes for years and years. I was like, Nope, won't throw it away. Um, it sort of goes back to that comment earlier about how easy it is for you know circular to also coincide with hoarding because we also didn't want to throw it away because we were like no we will we will use this for something mm. even though it was accumulating to a point where we were like oh god there's so much we've got bins full we should probably just yeah. get rid of it like no and we can't <laughs> do you think that's that's something that a lot of the kind of the maker community the 3d printing thing will also be having a similar issue um, yeah, yeah. So really, it's kind of something we've actually started doing is reaching out to other people and other small hobbyists uh educationists uh and businesses about taking their waste mm -hmm. to help them out and show them that you can recycle okay there's certain things you can't but we will take as much as we can yeah. to help recycle that so we know that it can be repurposed and most of what we make as well if it fails or whether someone doesn't like it you can just break it back down and turn it into something else again but um, yeah, it's it's only recently have we started talking to other businesses about asking them 
what do they do with their waste? Would they, you know, most of them have said they just throw it in the bin. And we've said, would you be interested in giving it to us and we can help repurpose it and stop it from going into landfill? Yeah. So what, how, how do you, how do you actually do that then? So you've got, you know, your, your broken failed print and then yeah. what do you do with it to kind of how we used to be able to? So we, can, we can tell you how we used to do it. Um, <laughs> some people here I've, I, I've met before, but um, when we did markets and we were explaining it, when we first started doing it, actually a friend of mine in the 3D print community also does this and bear with me, it's a bit of a crazy idea, but you buy a glass juice blender yeah, smoothie, and smoothie, smoothie maker. yeah smoothie maker but with a glass um yes. glass jug to be safe you do not want plastic and plastic and i watched him do it he's made a lot of videos on it i was like hmm i like this idea i think and he said to me yeah give it a try so basically you get some of your uh, basically like, he stole my my blender and was like oh it's fine because it's coming up to christmas so you're going to get a new one anyway so it's fine you yeah, can you don't I, want this i sort of just borrowed it off harry i went, can i just borrow that for like a day you know you might find plastic in it but you know you don't, you don't use it anyway <laughs> you started blending it up like you would like a, like a genuine like making juice I mean, it made some awful sounds, but hey, it was an old one. So yeah. that's how we started it. Um, but obviously we want to try and use a, a, bit, a, bit, a little bit less electricity and also because it's probably not as safe as other things. So we actually upgraded start, yeah, we upgraded, saved crank. up and bought a hand crank shredder. So we're doing it ourselves. But then let's say um, with 3D printing, like how it was showing, you can get some really thick bits of plastic and we could not for the life of us break it down. Mm. Uh, you had to hammer it, but obviously you've got to wear loads of, loads of health and safety, you know, gloves, goggles, <laughs> helmets. And even but, then there were still bits of plastic yeah, that even fly then. over and you'd be like, oh gosh, where did um, it go? And then it's only recently have we actually gotten bigger with the recycling side that we actually bought a granulator. So we're breaking it down <laughs> and it is a monster, but it, it does the job for us, which you all saw the little pellets. And that's sort of how it grew from this little idea to... Don't get us wrong, by the way, we still 3D print and design stuff. We just like to know that we can go, oh, that's not worked out. In the blender it goes, in nice the blender it goes. We can, we, we're not causing more of a problem, if that makes sense. Mm. We're, we're able to ensure that our waste 100% and everybody else who wants to sign up to giving us their waste will be repurposed and reused and can continue to be reused yeah. and repurposed. Yeah. But it's only fair It's almost a bit, no, I was no, going to say, I, it's almost like a really nice kind of close to home loop or system, a bit like if you grew your own you know yeah. food or something then actually you can compost it back in the ground and then you know yeah. <laughs> regrow it again exactly. you showed us a little um a little tour earlier before people joined uh, would you mind uh, showing uh, we some can. of the 3d I printers will... in your no disclaimer though is that we're <laughs> in the angle it down. But we won't do angle it, it down do because it we're saying we're actually in the midst of selling my old car because i'm i want to kind of help the economy uh, the environment by getting a hybrid i'd love an electric car don't have that kind of money so i've recently bought a hybrid but i need to get my rid of my old car and there's a lot of random stuff in it so we've moved it out of that old car and it's all in here so we're just going to show you the top of this workshop nice it's even quite busy in this workshop but please take uh, bear in mind we are very uh, we're very much into star wars marvel like i'm very we're very uh, geeky kind of people so yeah. i'm gonna let you do that okay uh, i'm in charge of the yeah, camera you're in charge of the camera so let me pull that up a bit those are the 3d printers just sitting over there these <laughs> and sort of in the corner this way these are all boxes of pla that we've actually broken down recently we had been holding on to them and they were oh how many sacks did we take with us six? we took six sacks to break break down in the granulator and we have made we got 15 no, 16 12, boxes. 12 boxes oh, 12? Yeah, we've got very heavy on. boxes so it's amazing how much though it looks like a lot of stuff when it, and as soon as you break it down you don't realize how small you can actually compact <laughs> yeah, it, it. Was, it was quite because uh, we had we've been filling up so we had been speaking to a few other companies and they sent us their material which we had been using our blending technique and hand crank shredding technique with but because we were getting so much we just couldn't keep up with it so we were storing them in do you know those great big black rubble bags you can get we mm -hmm. sort of been filling them up with their individual colors so we had like black bag red bag white yeah. bag and when we had time we would we would go through them but when we got the granulator we went we went and used it for the first time properly and within two days we just blasted through about seven huge sacks full of plastic because mm. it, well it's a machine it can do it much quicker yeah. than yeah. we can so we so with the um the granulated plastic correct me if i'm wrong it's not that you can put it back into a spool to then be used into a 3d printer is that then or or is it so there, there's a few <laughs> things we're going into i've got a friend called alex who's very much into the sort of this kind of stuff and he's bought a machine that you can actually repurpose old plastic and turn it in back into filament 
I haven't bought one of those because I don't dare want to get into that, whereas he's more interested in that kind of thing. So I'm mm -hmm. looking into maybe breaking down things for him and selling like, let's say, bags of the plastic and then they can repurpose it into sport or back into a sport. Yeah, so he wants to specialise in a material called ABS, which yeah. is it's a bit more hard wearing, but it's also a bit more brittle. And also it can be a bit toxic, a bit toxic. So we don't use it because we've got we haven't got a ventilated space, basically. So our space wouldn't be suitable for using ABS because, you know, we don't we don't want to get unhealthy. Yeah. <laughs> um, but because he said we, he wants to go into ABS, a lot of spools actually, they're, the, they're all tucked behind there. But a lot of the black spools that we get that the filament comes on is actually made from ABS. Oh, some of them don't have marks, but some of them do, fortunately. And we're learning all about the plastic marking system because a lot of the schools come mm. from China, I think it is. You, they've got they've got a much bigger list when it comes to all the different numbers. The numbering system for them is it goes far far more than seven. Mm. You find in the UK, seven <laughs> it's just like a tiny little drop in the ocean compared to their list of plastic yeah. numbers. <laughs> So really we're looking to like separate all the plastics and everything and then find ways to either repurpose it into like coasters and clocks and hopefully other things or people could actually buy bags of the what i say abs well, yeah, or with the, with the schools we can stuff. break them down and send yeah. them back to him so he can make he can make abs filament then out of the schools yeah because uh, there's, be there's a few companies we know of actually do you mind grabbing me that one actually that's a really good one to show so the company we work with called filamentive they actually break up um similar things like green items this is actually from recycled plastic as well but mm -hmm. they're a much bigger company and their spools are made of cardboard uh, so that okay. you can throw it in the bin so it actually gets recycled whereas like we said those plastic ones up till now no one's been able to do anything with them i mean they're great for like wound right winding up fairy lights and stuff like that um we could have shown that as an example, i know yeah, we don't, don't <laughs> so yeah we try to find ways to reuse all of our plastic uh reels other than like yeah just they were for fairy so lights at christmas until recently that we properly sat down and started thinking well if we're going to be repurposing our PLA let's look at what the spools are made of and we'll see what actually can be done with them and that was when we started stacking up all the ABS ones separately and then being like oh well, this one's from, made from uh, PS which is actually technically can be recycled in a black box okay that's clever okay yeah. that's good to know um, but unfortunately there are a lot of spools <laughs> that just don't have any marks on them so you have no idea what they're made from because mm. it's a bit like when you buy a ready meal and you don't actually know what the container's made from because they're just like, oh, it's widely recycled, but you don't yeah. actually know if it's widely recycled in mm. your area. Yeah. So yeah. I, I will say though, it, it's only recently we really, during lockdown and COVID, we really like, like, really gone like how would the full ham on this? I'd say we've really like. It's, it's caused us to have because I I was doing a lot of dog walking and pet care, and with more people spending more time at home, they don't necessarily need dog walking and pet care because they can spend I'm more time them. <laughs> yeah um so it's meant that we have had to be we've just forced ourselves basically to be like right we have to do something to actually continue making money and we need to make changes because there are so many people now that are small businesses hobbyists and they're all doing 3d printing and even education facilities have 3d printers that we're like we need to evolve our business is like a crossroads and we decided we're going to stick with this route are we going to branch yeah. out and start doing something really pushing ourselves to yeah. a, in a new direction because as no, much i think as it's much, really exciting yeah, yeah. I, as much as don't get me wrong i love i love 3d printing i always will but the thing is i will be honest with myself as well is the fact that there's more and more people who are now especially during lockdown i've lost a lot of clients because everyone was like oh you know during lockdown i bought a 3d printer so i can do it myself now i'm like ah but what are you doing with your waste so i've sort of sort of adapted <laughs> and overcome nice. it, like ah but what do you do with that said waste so maybe come back yeah. to it so um, a few customer my old clients, though, that they are now 3D printing themselves, they're actually, like we said, we're slowly starting to send their waste our way. So we're still making our own items. We're yeah. still doing commissions. We're not, we're never going to stop doing that. But we know that that's slowing down and the recycling side is becoming a bigger part for us. And um, since Harriet uh, has less dogs, Harriet's been at home a lot more with me to break down more stuff and make more ideas. And hence why. <laughs> blend, uh, blend. Well, no, you've got yeah. a granulator. I've yeah. noticed there's quite a lot of questions in the chat, actually, yeah. now. So we might move to, to kind of some... some Q and A and open it up. There's some really interesting ones, actually. Oh, there's a few. Um, I see. Yes, yes, I see a few. I'm, I'm already at. Yeah, we'll take that. <laughs> <laughs> um. So, where's the first question? Um, Sophie, did you swap the? I'm just going to see if I can find it. 
You do have them if you want. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so Catherine was asking, how do you make the new spoon from the granite PLA? But I think we pretty much covered that. Or is there anything else that you wanted to add? Oh, um, we'd, I guess I'd need Alex for that part, wouldn't we? Yeah, you need yeah. Alex for that. There's a few, yeah, um, without knowing the company's names, you can actually buy these, um, for like re, I don't know what they're called. I, I think they're called extrusion machines, basically, where you can extrude, you extrude filament from it. I know that uh, there's a company called Precious Plastics that have a, it, they do have an extruder, but it's, um, it's not, the fee, you have to, you have to, with with PLA, obviously, it come, with well with filament, it comes in two sizes. So you get one one point seven five millimeter, and you get two point eight five millimeter. And usually, with big companies, they have like a laser pointing at the filament to make sure it's coming out at the right speed, so it's being thinned out to the right millimeter thickness. Um, but you have to work out that for yourself with like the precious plastic machines. Yeah, there are other extruder machines that I think you can set them to the speed so that you can get them doing two point eight five or one seven five. Um, and there are even 3D printers now coming out that are being worked on that you can put granules into them directly and they'll turn it into yeah, filament as that's printing it. That's, that's still, still a prototype. Yeah, that's still, some happened. of this is still very new, even for us as well. But um, before that's we, exciting. I want to quickly give a shout out actually is let Jenny, anyone watching this as well, what a li um, look up a company called Precious Plastics. They're from Denmark. They're amazing. They are an incredible company. They're, Please I've support them because we try our best to I've support them. I've known of them for a long time. <laughs> Um, but it's only really sort of this year that we've been like hooked <laughs> on watch. They've got so many YouTube videos, and they're also really they're really in educationally like informative, and they're fun. And they show you how they're open source, aren't they? Yeah, it's a huge open yeah. source company, so you can. Yeah, they they want their machines to evolve. You know, like the fourth version of their original machines. Yeah, but... I just had to give them a shout because if it wasn't for the you showing me those videos, I wouldn't have actually carried on with this idea. So yeah. I was like, that is awesome. So yeah. Right. Well, um, thank you. I've just shared it in the, in the chat and I would also make sure that we put it in the email as well. Because yeah, that's true. Yeah. I have come across them and they're really, really good. So we had another question from Marianne, which sa uh, who said, would love to know how much of the household plastic waste one could keep and reuse at home. Hmm. Well, that's actually something that precious plastics go into. They, we are we're sticking with uh, 3D print waste because we know that at the moment there's a huge gap in the market for specifically 3D printing waste. There are more and more companies that are working. Like if you go on precious plastics, going back to them, they have something called a bazaar. Um, and on the bazaar, you can find people in the UK or in France or in Germany, and they've got like collection workshops and they'll collect your different plastic materials. So bleach bottles, cleaning bottles, milk bottles, milk bottles uh, even because technically, although I think flower pots, for example, you can't recycle those to your council, which I always thought was crazy. They don't do a buyback scheme, scheme at the garden center or something like that. Like, oh, okay, we'll take them back and reuse them. But with, with precious plastics idea, you can, you can repurpose them. So I believe they're made from ABS. I think I can't quite remember if that's right, but I know that it's one of the items that they can repurpose and they they do like huge lists of if we had an a4 an a5 oh a3 it goes the other way an a3 printer i would love to print out this poster they have because it it tells you all the different plastics and all the different melting points and all the different like granulation techniques and things for them it's yeah there are there are endless possibilities even plastic bags they can even you can even repurpose plastic bags with their machinery yeah because you can they've got a compression machine which it's like an oven basically it's an oven sideways uh and as it heats up you put the plastic bags in it as it heats up it compresses it into a mold so then once it's cooled down you can pop it out and you can make yourself like a plant pot or something like that out of plastic bags which is insane mm, it is crazy i think this is a really interesting area around the circular economy where it's almost as i see a lot of also startups and businesses getting to kind of um re i don't know get to know materials again and getting closer to home and re, you know making new materials out of waste as well um and, and looking around what what can you maybe repurpose and, and yeah put into a mold or, or do it all much closer much more visible um from from it being on the other side of the world as well <laughs> before. yeah but that's what we want to lead into eventually so now we've got the granulation machine originally we well at the moment we're using silicon molds and a little portable oven that we can pop outside so we can remelt the material back down but we want to eventually be we want to purchase an injection molding machine yeah. so a little a little tabletop version not 
not one of these huge industrial ones because three phase. I haven't got three phase, not enough space. Um, yeah. <laughs> we'll, talk, we'll talk about that. The nightmares bit. of three we'll phase. That, um, yeah. But we want to go into that because you can you can you can get machines where you just pour granulated material into the top and you can use a hand crank to fill a mold. And we've spoken about how we could use 3D printing to obviously you would see you can use CNC machines to make molds. You can do laser cut out of uh, acrylic sheets and all sorts of different things. It's quite clever that precious puppets again on some of their videos they show you the different materials you can make molds from but we've seen some where you can um you can make molds using 3d printing to make a silicon mold and then you can use a metal around the outside to give it more of a you know a sturdy structure so that the material can't expand too much or push too much kind of thing yeah. and it means that we would be able to 3d print something make a mold of it and then make injection moldings from that mold so, yeah, it's and then very, we repurpose we're very excited about trying this all out. It's just, yeah, I'm very excited about trying that out. Hopefully that will be, hopefully the end of this year we'll have that. If not, beginning of next year. Yeah. yeah. Right. 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 Final question, because I think we have some people are having to jump off already. Um, but final question, one thing is like Mark seems to have a lot. At home. Uh, uh, good old Mark. Ways you to know spare Mark. And so and so. Uh, I'm really in contact. <laughs> I know Mark very well, so it's all right. There we go. You can send him a message after. And you also yeah, we'll, we'll just hook up question. after. <laughs> there <you go>. <laughs> <laughs> customer connection. Yeah. <laughs> and the final question was, what about the space that Think Engineer are in? They have a big workshop that could house an injection injection molding machine. So I'm actually quite good friends with the guys over at Think Engineer, but it was it's mainly been time, money, and money really. Because money, like money's the main, and, the and main we, factor. Yeah, the big machines can cost anywhere up to thirty thousand pounds. You know, too much money to for one one. A bit it's of also it's also to, would be rent and everything else yes. as well. Um, but. Yeah, they're good friends of mine. I just know they're incredibly busy because I did ask them the other day if they had some uh, plastic they'd like to give us. It's like, if they it's had like, any. They, the reason they know me quite well is because I ended up selling a couple of my printers to them because they're more engineering printers that I don't understand. Yeah, they, they, and they're, but they've been good friends to me and they've always, uh, and they've always really good helped guys. out. But yeah, I mean, if we run out of space, then yes, because I know we've got, we're running out a bit on time. But long story short with the granulator, the reason we brought up three, three, three phase is because we actually bought it not being told it was three phase i got a bit excited i got a bit a bit, bit happy on ebay and i was like oh my god a granulator oh it's a cheap one not like not like cheap cheap but it was like oh it's affordable that's fantastic i'll buy it so for the last until last week for the last month and a half we've had it in the workshop just sitting there mm. we didn't say anything to anyone because we were a bit embarrassed because we'd already posted about it and then i was like my brother's an electrician said I was like, that doesn't look like it fits in any of the ones here. My brother's like, that's because it's three phase. Long story short, a month and a half later, I was talking to my friend who actually owns a company in Bristol with a workspace I'm very good friends with. They have actually given us some space for free to use our granulator. Yes, unfortunately it's in Bristol, but they use a lot of, they actually use 3D printers all the time. So they, for free, break it down and give it to us anyway. So yeah. though we own it, it's down in Bristol. So we go every other week to do a big load of shredding and then come home. But they shred a lot of their plastic anyway because they always used to give me their waste from the beginning. So they now look after it. We did a huge, a huge pros and cons things about whether we would get a single phase granulation instead because like we could have it at home. It would mean we wouldn't have to travel. We could actually use it. But the problem was that the one we found was expensive and also unfortunately wasn't health and safety regulated because it had just been fixed up by this person who bought it by his electrician friend who'd wired it it didn't have an emergency stop button so we made a pros and cons sheet we're like yeah it's probably safe if we just keep so, what we yeah. have and and not look at that one anymore because that one <laughs> you know well anyone who knows dale knows that he's got one hand so it means that if something was to happen a sleeve was to get caught yeah or we'd be in a lot of trouble there'd be a lot of trouble and then he could have two bionic arms so yeah fun times <laughs> Thank you for that. Cool. Yeah, I, th I think on that that note, <laughs> rather I mean, scary note. <laughs> yeah, scary note. We might we might wrap up things. So again, thanks to everyone for joining, um, particularly to Dan and Harriet. So fascinating. We could probably um, hang out in your your probably garage for slash hours about thing for if hours. Ever, if you ever want us back to talk about it more, we we put a, would have developed a bit a little, little bit more since then. So yeah, next time we could always have it, have some clips of the granulator muted or something so you can see it in action without all the noise or something. 
Yeah, and I know, are you at the, the Oracle pop-up at the moment? You've got some of yeah, your so recycled lots, plastic. Lots of my lovely skulls are there. Lots of my, my, uh, my previous designs are there. And then we sell our coasters there and we're hoping to sell more there but obviously there's we'll there's about it, 80 we'll keep artists it spooky there, for so. halloween and then as soon as halloween's over we're going to start swamping in more of our recycled coasters yeah. and recycled items we just thought they, we'd be yeah. spooky for a while because they went very mm. well last christmas and we want people to just start to realize that they can recycle their waste so, yeah mm. okay. and i think there's lots of people in this um in this call in this group and with the circular economy club around resin who'll be really happy and excited to kind of I don't know, you know, go through any challenges, help link already. We've got, you know, things going as well. So yeah, feel free to kind of use, use this little community as the kind of a little, little think tank uh, thing for you as well. Yeah, definitely. Cool. Yeah. Right. So thank you so much, uh, Daniel and Harriet. What we're going to do is, um, we, thank you actually, because some of you who were on the call last week gave us like a few um, ideas of who you would like uh, basically to listen to. We've started, we've actually got the line up until pretty much December now, which is fantastic. So what we'll do is next week is summarize all of that. But uh, for the chat in two weeks time, we can have uh, Elise Jodalova, from Olio, the app. So they're really, their mission is to- Ooh. Sorry, we know Olio as well. <laughs> uh, yeah. So uh, she's coming and she's gonna talk about, you know, food waste and surplus. And that's really that sharing app um, that you've got. And she's got a lot of insight about Reading as well. Um, so that's gonna be fantastic to be in discussion with her. If you'd like to come and join us in two weeks time, please do so. Uh, and as I say, we'll send a full schedule of all the events that are gonna happen in the next uh, couple of months uh, via email as well. In the chat, I also put a link to our, um, if you want to register for our newsletter, not everyone is on it. So it's probably easier to sort of, for us to communicate with you. Uh, through the channel is not uh, spam. We only send about our events and any cool news that we hear about uh, the circular economy. So if you'd like to, you're welcome to do that. And thank you so much for having joined us today. We've really enjoyed that. <laughs> Have a lovely day. And sorry again for the <laughs> beginning that was a bit rough. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks everyone. Bye -bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye. -bye.